Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. You, you can't look at these niggas and think you adapting to that. Oh, you know, I'm being different because I'm a California nigga acting like an Atlanta nigga. No, you just a whole ass sellout. <laughs> you not no different, nigga. You's a bitch ass nigga. And they right. think you a bitch ass nigga. Right. And I think you a bitch ass nigga. Right. Everybody think you a sucker. So just the two, three niggas around you that sucking your dick got you confused. Because as soon as you step out here and you present yourself in front of us, we're going to look at your ass and your shit is going to be trash. Right. We don't want to hear no California nigga trying to make drill. Nah, the fuck are you doing? Fuck that That's shit. That's some Chicago nigga shit. And it's more or less a disrespect to what they go through and that created that shit. I think so too. It's not about can you emulate them niggas. Bitch, you ain't. That ain't your life. Yeah. That ain't your fucking life. Yeah. I, I, I totally 100% agree. And I feel like running from that shit is what got us to this point where we even have to discuss it. Yeah. Like when I hear it, and I, and I definitely hate to hear it from people outside of California even having to talk about it. Like, I feel like it's an in-house discussion outside of niggas like you telling us now, you need to know, nigga, you're not a trap artist. Yeah. Nigga, you, you from here, nigga. You just, sell dope. You sell dope, nigga. You're not a trap party. Nigga, that, you ain't never you been in a trap, got a trap house. Cause you got a spot. Yeah, you got a spot. And, and I do think some terms go mainstream. I'm yeah, not mad yeah, at yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like Crips. I mean, I, I can't just say I only respect Crips in California because I started going across the country. I'm seeing Crips everywhere, so I respect nigga. If a nigga banging, you got my attention. What was the yeah, first yeah. banging you seen outside of Cal? Was it banging in Little Rock? For sure. And that nigga got hit with that K and that yeah, nigga yeah, whole yeah. arm chunk was off. I was like, them, them niggas, niggas banging. Is, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Banging the little rock. It was an HBO special called Banging I was like, like is this shit serious? And that nigga got hit with that K, that That's bullet, you know, the K bullet's tumble. Yeah. Knocked a chunk out of Cuz's arm. And I was like, whoa. You know what I mean? But even going out of town, man, like, I shot a video in New York with all the Crips in New York, like three, four hundred Crips in New York. Man, them niggas not playing. Yeah. So I do think some things go culture, like the term trap. I'm not mad that you call it your spot a trap now. That's cool. That's mainstream. But glasses, how do it feel to have lived through an era where Tim Dog was actually being paid attention to, sure. to watching these niggas gang bang? This nigga said, having that gang war, we want to know what the fuck you fighting for. I love it. Fighting over colors, all that gang shit for dumb motherfuckers. Nigga, the whole... New York gangbang. Love the it. Entire so this is shit. so this is why I'm a dirt dirt bag as LA nigga. <laughs> Cause I smile. Right. We was headed for self-destruction, nigga. Welcome. You're welcome. You know what I mean? So and that's probably a raggedy street nigga ethic thing. I gotta change. <laughs> I still gotta change. Still got some more growing to do. Bro. But you know what I mean? Like, you just reorganize under a new name. I mean, whatever extra. It's weird to me when they start taking the situations like beefs and then bringing them out there to a bunch of other right. niggas they don't know. Right, That's right. just crazy. Right. You niggas is too committed. Yeah, it is. That's method. <laughs> like, you in. I was out there, niggas was like, yeah, you know, you fuck with them niggas from neighborhood. And I'm like, bro, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, you tripping. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I ain't finna hang yeah. out with you niggas no more. You niggas is trying yeah. to take on some Yeah, yeah y'all trying to take on shit y'all know nothing about. I'm in Jersey and a nigga like on G.O. And I'm like, Nigga, I know George. Man. Crazy nigga. Like, and I was like, oh, this shit is crazy. You niggas is committed. And Come on, man. So I, I respect it. But again, it, it, it does have to be a genuine thing. It cannot just be you emulating. And their relationships with their friends is real. It's a real thing. So however they retitle it, don't matter to me. I want to I want to transition into this from that because something I was going to bring up about meeting meeting uh, your heroes or West Coast legends or people you looked up to, Ice Cube. And I think about, while we talking about this, it made me think about my summer vacation. Sure. And I was thinking about like, if we did content the way that we do content now, how great that content would have been to see what story he told. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. About how he, how he did that, right? And uh, well, how they did that and how gang banging. Cause I believe, Every time I hear something, it's a California nigga going somewhere, getting some money, and turning see. the niggas out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I always thought that was a brilliant, brilliant song. Shout out to Ice Cube. I think, uh, in my personal opinion, if I, I hope this don't get, he don't take it like he took your opinion, but in my personal opinion, if Ice Cube had stopped making music at one point, he would have been top five rappers of all time. That's fair. I, I felt like. 
some of the music after that legendary shit didn't was you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like some of that I just I just wasn't into like Helter Skelter was different. Like you, you know what's funny? I look at it like I, I've told Deuce this personally and I'll say it out loud. It's like I think Snoop put a different pressure on the game. Mm. And I think what Snoop did when it comes to Ice Cube, because Ice Cube obviously was the dominant president. He was the nigga. He was the number one All rapper the way at one until time. Until Snoop Dogg yeah. popped on yeah. the scene, right? He was the dominant presence. And I think it made Ice Cube become a much better songwriter. Mm. Like I think Ice Cube, Prime Ice Cube is like a premier MC. You hear him rapping his shit, you be like, this nigga. This is nigga's incredible. Rapper. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he'll have songs like My Summer Vacation where the MC part of the storytelling is really where you hold the candle. Right. His his view into culture and you know perspective because was emceeing and you right. like man this niggas but when snoop came and snoop really did this thing for songwriting that rap had never had rap never had you know ll had glimpses of it you know what i mean a couple niggas but it never was these great records right like snoop when snoop came and the chronic and then dog style like you got to remember hip-hop went to a whole nother level whole nother level and i think i think what's crazy is as it sounds Everybody else who fuck with Ice Cube gonna automatically say America's most wanted in the death certificate. But to me, like, when you got to the Predator, and even as late as War, you know, the War and Peace yeah. disc, the War disc, West Side Connection, I think he became such a better and more complete artist as a songwriter. Mm. So, it, it he definitely reeled back so hard from him seeing, you know what I mean? Because he just wasn't one line to the end, one line. It wasn't right, as rock right, him right. as much as it was like, really incredible song even writing. the cadence even in like he would rhyme more yeah he'd make it to where if you heard his first verse on the west side connection album you know what i mean that verse uh how that shit start do uh bow down the first thing yeah the world is mine nigga get back don't fuck with my strap the gauge is racked about to drop the bomb i'm the west coast dime Big fish in a small pond. Now the feds trying to throw they book at the crook, but I shook. They worm and they, they hook. Yeah. Guppies hold they breath. They want to miss me when I'm tipsy. Running everything west, west side of Mississippi. Mississippi. It's the unseen pulling pulling scenes with my pinky ring. We got your woman, puck her up before we fuck her up. Bow down before I make a phone call. Got 25 killers Run running up, up on y'all for the cheese. We want the keys. Everybody, well, everybody freeze. freeze on your knees. Butt naked, please. Before any of you guppies get hard, nigga, rewind my part, fool, and bow down. The songwriting in that as an MC is incredible, and that's why he was he was so much more successful at that point. He had became like this really incredible songwriter, mm -hmm. and you could catch everything he was saying. Versus if you listen to a bird in a you know a bird in the hand or my summer vacation, whereas MCing was just overtly next level. Like he developed as a songwriter, not just as an MC. So I really hold that part of his career, as crazy as it sounds, better. It's crazy because, yeah, I never. That's an interesting perspective uh, because it's done seeing pulling strings. I, with I my think pinky those man. songs, those bird in the hand and all that shit. I think that's some of my sure, favorite shit yeah. ever. But I, I now that I'm listening to what you're saying, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but. It almost seems like every since um, what was the remix with Mac Ten? Can I roll with you? Now I'm on the run with a gun yeah. and this yeah, fool yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It seemed like to me that man. was the. It seemed like Mac Ten and Dub C was like a reigniting of a, like West Side Connection. Like them niggas. It seemed like Mac Ten put a new fire up on the Ice Cube. Well, well, I think to his to to his credit. Ice Cube is such a diverse type of MC as a rapper, mm -hmm. right? It could be easy E, and mm -hmm. he write for MC. He like, I'll write your life. Right. Like, I could translate your life into flows and into, yeah. into yeah. bars. Yeah. And then, like, when he went solo, I think he was hella inspired by, like, Chuck D. So then he took what Chuck D does and, like, made it way more gangster and mm -hmm. way more unapologetic. Mm -hmm. And then Cam, you know, Cam, Cam. came in his life and kind of, you know, Brother Ron and certain people, and then he started really getting into his blackness. Y'all be sleeping on Cam. You know what I'm saying? He started getting into his blackness, but his translation of the culture itself was amazing. And then Mac-10 brought him back to a street level to where mm -hmm. he felt comfortable. But his ability to translate, and as he 
progress over the years. It's funny because I heard an interview where he said every top MC has a three-year run. But them type of guys like him, he had a 10-year run. 10-year run. Because he was able to adapt. You can't do the same thing for 10 years. And you and, and you and and only greats adapt. Like, yeah. the greats keep going. Prime example, like, M shit was different because M pretty much had this gear. Mm -hmm. And he made it work. It took longer for his second gear to kick in. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the the the, the Jay-Z's, the, the Ice Cube's, the, the guys who really keep on just fucking the game in two, you know what I mean? Like, they really develop more as artists. So Cube, who was this phenomenal MC, became this phenomenal record writer, and mm -hmm. that's probably gonna go down in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for probably sure. in the next for sure. decade, for sure. And you know, um, it's an old adage that says, don't meet your heroes, right? And I, I watched all of the stories and heard the stories, and when you talking about meeting Ice Cube and how the miscommunication happened or whatever, and I, I look at that shit as like, I think younger niggas communicate like that, bro. Yeah. Like, I hear young niggas saying how they feel all the time with no regard. Like, it's like if you you get older, I mean, you still a very blunt person. Yeah. Don't get me That's wrong. That's my problem. Yeah, you very blunt, right? And I think I am too for the most part. And I think, but I think at this point, people respect it, right? Because mm -hmm. a nigga that say what's on his mind, that's the first thing he says, it's probably the nigga you can trust. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he's letting you know what it is from the rip, right? So, but you, and and when you were saying, what what was your exact quote? Don't let me get, get you saying um, what you said. I said it was, somebody I looked up to, he just seemed scared to be in the element. Right. And somehow that guy took into saying he was scared of me. In reality, he probably was just tired of who the fuck knows what was going on, because I didn't ask him. And again, me telling Joe Budden's my, what, what I thought. See, it's one thing to tell people what I think. It's another thing to tell people what I feel. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. I told Joe what I felt, not what I thought. I didn't have a thought because I didn't process the situation. And it made him feel, made Q feel like, damn, this little nigga trying to make me like a mark. And I'm like, that's not the point. It's just, nigga, I grew up listening to your music and its capacity. So I think you're this kind of person. I know these kind of people. Right. So, you know, it's easy to be wrong. You know what I mean? And it was what it was but you know at that point I, I think at this point just like you said i think he understands that i think he understands my admiration i think he understands my my gripe whatever i ever felt but he also understands that there's a lot of love in what he does for me what he means to me so i think at this point it's a thing where he respected he like okay i see what this little nigga is on you know what I mean versus at first where i was just this little crib nigga from 7th street right, Rise right that came from selling charm and wasn't making the greatest records. Who was this nigga to even be speaking be on speaking me? speaking on me, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So versus now where, like, I, I gave enough time in to earn everyone's respect about my opinion. I think that the thing is, too, like, <clears throat> I, I I personally looked at it in a, in, a, in a more deeper perspective, too, because rappers go through shit, right? Yeah. And... You're not you're not a rapper first, sure. right? So I wasn't at that time. At that time, so it's not easy to empathize with people, right? Because I had to learn this shit too, like, and I'm not talking about Ice Cube in particular, but sure. just other rappers have been knocked out by OG gangster niggas. Yeah. They've been stripped and had their pockets ran in. Then niggas then ch been chased all around town, and you better show up with this payment or nigga or else or. And I'm not saying Q went through that, nobody. I don't know sure. no, nobody's story in particular, but it took me a long time to empathize with that either because I'm a I'm a I'm a just a reactionary. Like if that's happening to me, I'm I just refuse to be victimized. Yeah, so I'm yeah. probably gonna die on, on the, the street shit. right now. Or that's it's go just right gonna now. go whatever's gonna happen. Versus gonna, where if you have millions of dollars right. you know, and opportunities, you have to size it up different. You have to think and, and about it. And that's the problem. I was talking to Charlemagne at the Breakfast Club. And he was like, Glass, if you get tired of being a street nigga, I'm or being in the streets, and I'm like, well, first off, obviously, nigga, I'm not in the streets all the time. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I, I fly state yeah, to state. Right, right, right. Sitting down doing conversations and putting right, out music. Right, right. But right. I said the morals, the problem with that, I really genuinely believe in the morale of street urban culture. Right. So I may live like that right now. Mm -hmm. Like if a nigga walked up in this motherfucker tripping, he might have to go all the way. Right. Now, right. I think Prime Glasses as a gang member, if a nigga come to take my chain, I'm not finna die over this chain anyway. Right, right. I'm gonna kill over this chain. Right, right. I don't give a fuck if you gave it back, I'm gonna kill over. Right, now, right. Now, that right. part may have disappeared. Right. Like, if you took something from me 
you can have it. I'm not gonna argue with you to, to take this. You want this Bentley? Right. The niggas knew that. You want this Bentley? You can have it. It's gonna come with a lot of bullets. That's just how it's gonna go. Now today, if you return my shit, maybe you don't get the bullets. Cause right. now as an adult and as a mature man, I'm like, eh. Right. Giving you these bullets ain't worth going to jail because you gave my shit back. Right. But if you took my shit and you don't want to give it back, that's coming with bullets. Right. That ain't gonna never change. And I think that's the difference where where me and Charlemagne was talking, that's in the streets. Yeah. Maybe the way C see it is like if you took something from him, he's like, Yeah, I call the police. Right. I ain't that far removed. Nah, nah. You finna nah. get these bullets. Nah, and because and somewhere along the line, in your mind, you thought it was okay for you it to was take sweet. my shit. Yeah, yeah. You thought that. You fucking bitch ass yeah. nigga. <laughs> you fucking. Yeah. I ain't gonna argue with you. Oh, right. man, I don't want no problem here. This is all you. Right. That bitch come with a lot of bullets. Right. I'm paying niggas and doing shit <laughs> right off the rip. You finna get this work. I don't even want it work. back now. Yeah, I don't want it. If you give it back, I might stop, but I'm not telling you if you give it yeah, back, I'm gonna yeah, stop. Yeah, I'm gonna stay on blue. Stay on blue. I'm just trying to stay racked up like you. Put an eight in a one and do magic. Tryna stretch hair around like elastic. Eco friendly drug dealer, I don't waste no plastic. Use all four corners of that baggie. Uh, all I ever wanted was a bankroll. So I pull up on champ before the bank close. Say no to stank hoes and stank clothes. No paramedic pimping, nigga, we don't save hoes. Yeah, rest in peace to little.